taken, had been taken out of context. That, and to explain to me that that was not the intent of the statement that they issued, actually they were supporting the agreement and the discussions that we had about fighting uh, fake people who have been misleading Kenyans all over, quoting the government of Canada, to say that they are not aware of that, that issue. And we were able to sort out that issue and move on and be able to actually establish systems, which I can discuss later on, about getting seasonal workers to go to these countries. So what is the position with Canada now? See, when you left the ministry, what was the position on that point, on migrant workers? The position of Canada now is that one of the bilateral uh, labor agreements that I'll be following up is that Canada does not sign bilateral labor agreements as a nation with countries, but the provinces, according to their law, are the ones that sign agreements. And what we had agreed about was about getting seasonal workers for Canada. Canadas are looking for seasonal workers, so that during the summer, you can go there, you can work for six, six months or so, and then go back to your country. They already have many seasonal workers from lots of South American countries, from the Philippines and even uh, other Asian countries, but they don't have many or any from our country. So. That is something that is still uh, in process, and it is quite exciting because I got, got information from some colleagues and some friends from Canada when I was nominated for this position, saying at last now we can revive the conversation and continue from where it was left. Before the next uh, question, uh, your documents that you came with should be handed sergeant to the clerk to verify with what we have on you. Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. CS, yes, I'll just start my question from where you stopped on Canada. Because then you are Foreign Minister now, you've been nominated to be the Minister for Labor. And the issue that you had then was a labor issue, uh, basically. I want to hear what are you going to do to now actualize not just that Canadian program, but we have since uh, we established the National Employment Authority that has a system that is called uh, the National Employment Authority Integrated Management System that was created to be a portal where Kenyans, young Kenyans who are looking for jobs, can be able to access jobs even in the diaspora. This portal is there, but uh, basically because of what uh, has now been viewed as very poor communication by government, many Kenyans don't know about it. Many Kenyans don't access the jobs that are advertised there. There are some who you hear complain that the jobs that are there are low cadre jobs in the Middle East and elsewhere, but not the kind of jobs that uh, quite a number of our well-educated workforce is looking for. So I want to hear now, you, if approved as Minister for Labor, what are you going to do to ensure, one, that this portal has more professional and higher cadre jobs, but also Kenyans are aware and you create awareness to Kenyans on how to access jobs using this portal and other uh, fora that you may create as Minister for Labor. Uh, and having served as government spokesperson, probably this is your opportunity now to engage with the young people, create jobs, and uh, be able to show them how to apply for those jobs. Uh, the next, Jeanette. Thank you, Chair. Chair, my question to the nominee is uh, uh, the last less than two years now, you have traveled a lot in terms of changes from one ministry to another. You started from Ministry of Foreign Affairs, then you went to the Ministry of Tourism, and now you are here to be vetted for the Ministry of Labor. In a, in a brief manner, can you share with us what you have achieved in the Ministry of Foreign and the Ministry of uh, uh, Environment, no, this other one, uh, Tourism. Because it will inform us what, uh, what's ahead of you. Let's take Naisula as well. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Honorable Mutua, on 1st of March 2023, while, when you were the Cabinet Secretary, 
at the Ministry of Foreign and Diaspora Affairs, you made a very important communication through a note verbal where you informed diplomatic and consular missions, UN and other international organizations in Kenya, that it was agreed in the interest of efficiency that the missions may communicate directly with departments, different ministries in the country. And you know now, even in the Ministry of Labor, you'll be dealing still with, with other, other countries. It is important for you to share with this committee and also Kenyans what informed your decision then uh, because normally we know that they write directly to the Ministry of um, Foreign and Diaspora Affairs, but now they could write directly to other ministries and, um, and uh, departments. And um, uh, the last question that I had is uh, that how do you plan to handle the perennial industrial unrest in most sectors, uh, for example, health? Uh, because you, as much as it is in health, you will play a critical role as the CS of uh, labor, that is in case you are approved and confirmed as the CS of labor. Many, you can answer those three. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, sir, uh, Majority Leader Honorable Shungwa, thank you very much about uh, the National Employment uh, Authority. And it is true, they have a website that somebody, uh, many people do not know about. Uh, I've been in government for very long. I've never even looked at that uh, website. And uh, you know the old adage that uh, if you wink at somebody in the dark, you're the only one who knows you're winking. And that is exactly what has been happening. The, normal, the, the Kenyans who are looking for work, Mwanainti who's looking for work, has not really known about this portal and what is available. So one of the first things that I'm going to undertake is to have a good marketing campaign to ensure that Kenyans know about the opportunities that are there. Kenyans do not want handouts. Kenyans want to be given opportunities. They want to know where you can get their skills. They want to know how to apply for jobs. They want to know where the opportunities are. And because there's a mistaken idea that the jobs out there that are available are only jobs for house helps. Whereas when I did a bit of research and I looked at the available jobs in the countries, countries like Australia, Germany, Italy, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Turkey, US, Canada are looking for people and they are ready to employ Kenyans in various areas. For example, uh, we, the international community are asking for about 11,200 jobs of drivers. If you can drive, they are looking for drivers. But we have to be a ministry that is able to take the person who is looking for the work and connect them with the employer and teach them also how to get those jobs. I know what kind of documents do you need to get those jobs. They are looking for another 8,400 domestic uh, drivers. They are looking for hotel workers. We've got about 3, 000, nearly close to 3,000 people in beauty. If you've done beauty to work in a spa, to be able to do nails, they're looking for those young people to be able to go to Canada and other countries. In also in firefighting, in all the different areas, barristers in, uh, in uh, heavy truck drivers, construction workers. If you're a mason, if you know how to do carpentry, you know, Australia is looking for you. So we are going, going to make sure that people are able to know that regardless of the field you are in, nurses, doctors, people are looking for Kenyans to be able to work. So as you wait for the economy to grow, because our job is not to send people out of the country. We have to also grow jobs here. As you wait for our economy to grow, in the meantime, do not give up hope. We are going to make sure that we connect you to available opportunities and also help you gain the right skills so that you can be able to get uh, to those uh, jobs. Uh, Honorable Junet, you asked uh, a question about uh, moving from one to uh, the other. The other day, I was thinking about my good fr late friend, Honorable John Michuki, who quickly served in uh, the Ministry of communication and uh, transportation, as it was called then, and then transited to Minister of Interior, and then very quickly to the Ministry of Environment. And uh, when I look at the, the thinking behind the president moving from one ministry, is because that I move in, and in a very chap chap manner, I'm able to enact uh, processes that are able to grow the system. For example, in the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, I was able to sort out an all-standing issue of uh, deployment 
You know, they, for a long time, people felt that they can be they are deployed according to who knows who. I set up a system so that if you're in the service, you know that when your time comes, you don't need to know the minister, you don't need to know the PS, that automatically you fall into place to bring a sense of fairness. I was also able to work uh, through to get a lot of MOUs that had uh, pended to be quickly uh, worked on and to move faster so that we can get into all these agreements so that uh, people can be able to move faster. I was able to also work closely with the president uh, to prepare for trips that were not mainly just diplomatic in nature but were also very economic in nature because it's all about getting other people's money to come to our country, bringing money to our country. And I was at the forefront negotiating for companies to come and open uh, factories here in this country. When I moved to the Ministry of Tourism and, uh, and Wildlife, I, I quickly looked at where do we get our tourists from? Why are we losing tourists to other people? And uh, by meeting all the stakeholders, I've set up a system where we are concentrating on markets like the African market and other markets that can give us the numbers that we need and the money that we need. I also, by looking at reorganization of how Kenya Tourist Board does its things, is to focus on key areas of marketing our people. Uh, so that people can come to this country. I was able to deal with the issues that I talked up, I don't want to repeat myself, about human wildlife conflict and the arrangement of those things that were done. So I'm very, very proud of the work that we did. But I did not do this because I was sitting uh, in the office. You know, uh, when I got into the office, I spent few hours in the office and more hours on the ground. I started what we called Utali Mashinani, because Kenya has so many things to offer. But we've only been selling the beach and the ocean. And I wanted to be able to transform and make every part of this country to be a tourist attraction site. I went to Samburu, I went to Kwale, Kilifi, Narok, Taveta, Laikipia, Makueni, Kitui, Busia. I was in Bungoma, Mombasa, Kiambu, just to name, mention but a few. I went across this country and I was still going around this country to look at new tourism circuits so that tourists can keep on coming. I, have a, I had a very big plan, which I hope my colleague, uh, which we have talk, we'll talked to her, she can continue. And that is transforming our coastal area to be the entertainment zone for the continent of Africa, to be the Miami of Africa, to be the Riviera of Africa, so that people who are landlocked in the continent and others can come just to have a good time at our coastal area, enjoy our culture, and be able to move on. On the final question by uh, Honorable Lesuda about the not verbal, this was uh, done not just by myself, but an agreement after cabinet discussions of how we could cut down the bureaucracy. Because you look at, for example, the amount of money that we get as grants and loans from foreign nations, uh, and the amount of money that we spend of those monies, we are only absorbing 25 to 30%. So here we are uh, crying out that we don't have money for development, yet close to 70% or 65% plus of the monies from donor countries are unspent. Why? Because of bureaucracy. By the time the process goes between an ambassador to come and see a minister for this activation to go from uh, the Ministry of uh, uh, Finance and back, it takes forever. So the idea was, can we speed up? But it was not just a blanket where a minister, uh, uh, um, uh, an ambassador would wake up and just walk into the office of minister. No, no, no. You talk to the minister, but you also communicate to the minister of foreign affairs. And when the minister was approached by an ambassador, they communicate to the minister of foreign affairs. And during their meeting, there would be an officer sent from the minister of foreign affairs to sit in that meeting to take notes. What it was cutting was that uh, direction of not verbal. A letter comes from my office. It goes to the, uh, or comes from an ambassador, goes to the minister of foreign affairs, the protocol d d division, spends a day or two days there as it's being sorted, goes to uh, the relevant team it's sent to the ministry. The ministry takes two, three days before the minister sees it. The minister works on it. It comes back. The dates are wrong. And then now it goes back that you need new dates. It can take two weeks just to book an appointment of 30 minutes. But when they talk, among them, you say, no, I can't make it tomorrow. Can we make it next Wednesday? Two minutes, they have agreed on a day to meet to make sure that things are moving forward. I submit. Uh, Chairman, there's a question is not answered mm -hmm. on, um, on the industrial, the strikes. 
the health, you know, I gave that as yes. an example, but also on what he has said on the note of a bell, the same thing, Chairman, you've been saying about communication. When that was not communicated well, that it was to cut bureaucracy, it sent uh, scares out there, you know, people wondering whether just an office at any department can now communicate directly with an embassy. So that's what has come out clearly here about communicating what you would like to do. And I totally concur with you, Honorable uh, Lesuda, it's about communication, but there's a lot of pushback because people like the comfort of doing things the same way and people don't like to see change. So there's a bit of pushback, a lot of propaganda, by people who thought now that uh, their clout will diminish without looking at the bigger picture of trying to get our economy moving forward. But I totally agree. Uh, the final question uh, on the perennial labor uh, disputes. I bring experience as having served as a governor for two terms in Machakos where we had issues of labor disputes. And I realized that majority of these labor disputes and the strikes occur because the problems are led to fester from a small uh, pimple uh, to a gangrenous leg that has to be cut off. And my technique will be setting up an, uh, a, a, a system whereby they'll be tracking and knowing the kind of problems they are in the industry such that people, when the problem starts, we can intervene early. Because the Ministry of Labor has only been intervening at the end when people are already on the streets. We need to intervene even before a strike notice is issued. We'll be studying the landscape and uh, like radar, looking at where is the problem so that we can approach and, and try to have uh, dispute resolutions done when the problem is still small. But uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, and honorable members, we must realize that I want to speak having served in government uh, for over 20 years now, uh, thanks to God. A lot of problems for example, with the medical fraternity when they go on strike, and they went on strike when I was the governor, they were nursing, is because some of the fundamental human rights uh, issues that need to be taken care of are not taken care of. It's usually not even the issue of big salaries. It's a welfare. It's a way of operations. It's uh, the comfort level. It's the way they are empowered. Let's take, for example, when I go to Machakos, it was quite sad that you find that doctors would be treating somebody uh, who has medical insurance and uh, that person is under their care and yet when the doctor's child or spouse or, uh, or himself or herself got ill, they didn't have medical insurance. So it is correcting some of those uh, employment issues and one of the things that I want to do is look at uh, enforcement of the Employment Act to ensure that uh, we give workers the benefits that they deserve according to the law, because when workers are well, uh, work in a good environment, it increases productivity. Productivity means growth. Growth means more employment opportunities for our people. I submit. Uh, Robert Mbui, Owen Bayer, and George Morugara, in that order. Well, one, uh, thank you. One thank thing, you. Mr. Speaker, so that I, I don't lose it, on, on something that Honorable Lesuda asked, on uh, that not verbal. Yes. I, I just want to tell the, this committee that uh, the nominee is not factual. It's totally inaccurate. Challenge him. But one is one, that not verbal was the most unfortunate decision that has ever been made in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. To delegate their core mandate was wrong. And that thing was reversed immediately. The Prime Cabinet Secretary came into office. It was wrong. Me? Uh, was it the most unfortunate, not verbal? Yes, uh, and I respect uh, Honorable Nelson Koech and uh, the perspective that he has given. And I was chair of um, the Foreign and uh, Diaspora and Defense Committee, and we, we had discussions about this issue uh, quite a few times. And uh, it was a government policy that was passed at the time. And it fits the bill at that particular time and it served its end at that particular time. And uh, the good thing is that I know that, uh, you know, government looks at opportunities that are given and changes that are there, and you alter them according to the times and the lessons that are learned. I submit. Robert. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is about the cash transfer program for older and vulnerable persons that was started in 2007, and the purpose was to provide regular and predictable cash transfers to those older and vulnerable people uh, identified in those deserving uh, households. Now, unfortunately, that has not been successful because there's constant delays. Now, I want to point out two, three things. One is that uh, there has been shifting goalposts over the period. Uh, at the beginning, when I was elected in 2013, there were issues of the, the banks that they would get their money from. Later on, it shifted to M-Pesa, I don't know, circles. And every time there is a change, it, of course, interferes with all those people that collect this money. Secondly, uh, there is an issue of onboarding all people that qualify, because the minute the government says that people of a certain age are supposed to get it, there is also those who are of that age that do not qualify and their names are not picked up and they also don't get the money. And thirdly, there is the issue of interference by county governments. Uh, I'll give an example of Machakos County when you were governor in 2013 when the national government was picking names of those that would qualify to be given money, the county government also collected names at the same time and those that were collected at county government obviously never got the money because there was no capacity. How would you handle those things given this docket? Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I would like to address this question to our nominee on uh, Labour uh, disputes. Uh, uh, nominee, this country loses billions of shillings because of labor disputes and strikes and uh, such things. But uh, the unfortunate thing that has always happened in government is we wait until a labor dispute comes, we see it looming, you know, and uh, nobody takes action until people give notice, they give th three notices, and uh, people go on strike and disrupt labor and productivity in the country. The Ministry of Labor it actually has a mandate to preempt strikes, to have a discussion with, uh, with uh, human capital to ensure that we don't get into situations like that. Like when KQ had its strike, it was devastating to the economy. But we had a minister in charge, and uh, there wasn't much that was done until now it came to threats, to courts, and all that. But at that particular time, the country is grounded. How do you intend to be different? such that this ministry is useful in terms of ensuring that this is not a country that chases away investors because of labor disputes. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Nominee, unfair labor practices, very common in our country. The labor and employment courts are actually flooded with all these cases where we just don't do it right. You are going to be the custodian of government policy as regards employment. One of the most unfair labor practices in the country is for the government to take interns, student, uh, young people on internships. One year after that, they are let to go. And yet those government departments soon thereafter start advertising for positions, and we also know that people go on retirement, natural attrition. Would you be bold enough to advise the government that these interns should actually be the first port of call for the government in matters employment? And as we speak, they are looming uh, strikes because of the first five or six cohorts who have been released. Mamini, you can answer those three. Uh, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, let me start with uh, Honorable Mbui on the issue of uh, Inua Jamii. I think the challenge we've had with Inua Jamii is that, uh, and I've done my, uh, my research, is that people have tried to be creative and it is now improving, but uh, it's, it's an old syndrome and where, that's why we have devolution, whereby you are giving 2,000 shillings to an old grandmother and you want that grandmother to travel from the small village in the middle of nowhere and go for 100 kilometers to the county headquarters to get the money. But this eventually was, was, uh, went down further, even to M-Pesa and other systems. And my, my study is that we are still not being able to get to the ground completely. 
to the people who are most deserving. And one of the things that I'll do is work closely with the county governments and also with the national government system to go to the village-based system, not only for identifying the people who deserve the Inua Jamii funds, but also to collect data of the ones who exit, but also on the payment module. Why should I spend 300 shillings to travel to get my money or to the nearest M-Pesa place, because some of these old people don't have the M-Pesa monies, and then uh, travel back uh, you know, with the same money. So I'm going to find a system of getting the money to the people at their doorstep, more or less, uh, in a progressive manner. As you know, we already have about one point, close to 1.8 people in the system, and uh, looking at how we can get 1. it to 1.8 million or 1.8 people? 1.8 million beneficiaries. Uh, people, and we want to move it to, according to uh, what has been discussed in the cabinet I served in, close to 2.5, and continue to onboard them. But I'm also concerned, uh, Mr. Speaker, about the classification of our uh, people who are suffering from various disabilities, because the monies don't go to the disabled person, they go to the household. And so you find that many disabled people fall through the cracks. If you've got one or two members of a family, then that becomes one unit. And furthermore, the disabled even have at times higher challenges than the abled. And we may need to, to be fair in this country and see how what we can do to give them slightly more money compared to what we have. Initially, everything was pegged on the US dollar. It was supposed to be 20 US dollars. But with how the economy has grown now, they are getting 12 to 15 uh, US dollars, not the original 20 that was thought of when you look at the inflation and uh, the changes that are there. So this is an issue that is very close to me. I mean, the question about Machakos, I think there was uh, uh, maybe a miscommunication, because the government of Machakos that I served in as a governor were never collected names for for Inua Jamii or social protection. Uh, the names we were collecting was for water mapping. We were doing research to find out what are the needs in terms of water delivery in the area as a marker of poverty. But our data was for county government. The national government was collecting its own, its own data. Moving down to the second question uh, by uh, Mwishmiwa Baya about uh, disputes. I agree with you. And uh, I'm going to set up, if not if... Uh, vetted and uh, this committee proposes my name uh, for appointment, an early warning system. And I'm going to look at all the sectors and have people who are confidently can come. I keep an open door policy for those members of parliament that have even come to my office to see me. You know, I keep an open door policy for the, uh, for the different sectors to talk to me. Let me know uh, what is going on and let our systems know so that we can get and arrest them, as you said, early. You know, take care of this wound before it becomes uh, problematic and before the disruptions that are there. And also when the disruptions are there, I'm very good at bringing people together and being able to bring harmony, which is one of my biggest successes that I did when I got into the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife. I found a lot of people warring and fighting each other and was able to bring peace and calm within a very short time. I remember having discussions with Honorable Ishungwa about it. And uh, I was able to bring peace and sanity. And I believe I can be able to do the same because of the experience that I had in Machakos. Lastly, Honorable Burungara, thank you very much. I'm quite concerned. Uh, I looked at uh, when I went to uh, school in the US, I used to get uh, summer jobs working in a factory. And it was all those factories whereby uh, you're collecting wood as it comes down the drive. And there are strict occupational health hazard conditions. You have to have the helmet, the gloves. And then after every two hours, you took a break. And every two hours, you either took a small break of 15 minutes or a half break for lunch, another two, uh, uh, 15 minute break. So there are breaks throughout the day because what way to see a punda in those very uh, bad conditions. So the occupation health hazards and also working conditions of workers will be very key uh, to my uh, work if I am, you know, if I, am, if I go through this, uh, this process. And part of it is also the internship program because it doesn't make sense that a young person goes to a bank, they work very well, and uh, they serve in that internship, they are taught, and then when employment jobs come, they are let out. And I'm going to bring a policy to cabinet if I go through this process to ensure that if you are taken in as a, 
what do you call as as an intern in a ministry and you don't have problems and you're okay and you pass a certain mark into internship because some can be taken and they're not fitting you pass a certain mark that when positions employment of entry level are taken that you start with those ones and you're going to talk with the public service commission because fair is fair fair is fair thank you Submit. Daoud. Honorable Dawood, Honorable Masse, and Honorable Amisi, in that order. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, first I want uh, uh, Honorable Mutua. He made, in his opening, he made a few, I think, mistakes, where he says the fence was one billion, or was it one million? Then he says he brought it down to 850 million, or is it 850? Okay, that's just a comment. Um, regarding wildlife payments, you mentioned one billion was paid. Yes, I have confirmed one billion was paid. And His Excellency the President asked you within 60 days to pay a balance of, clear the balance of three billion within 60 days, and that was on April 12, 2024. Could you probably tell us Within that time, the two months are over in June, how far have you done? And you, he even asked you to simplify the way the forms are done. That's what I want to know for, for the wildlife. Secondly, uh, the disabled and street children. There is the National Disability Mainstreaming Strategy of 2018 to 2022 and the Street Families Rehabilitation Fund of 2003, 46,000 street ch families as of 2021. What have you done, or what will you do? Sorry, we have not done, but what will you do if you go to the, the ministry? Please give us an idea on that. The last one is, in the UK, there is some, you have just mentioned that you didn't know about the National Employment Agent Authority and what it does. In the UK, there is an agency of government, a job centers. They're in each and every place where people say what jobs are available and they link people to the jobs in industry and all those places. Would you, what is your idea about it? And if you do it, would you devolve it right to the um, locations, sub-locations, or is it counties? Thank you. Honorable Masse. Uh, thank you. Honorable nominee, my focus is on unemployment or limited opportunities. There's a limited number of opportunities in the country compared to the number of graduates that are coming out of our institutions every year. To make the situation worse, there is a mismatch between skills and industry needs. Sadly, there is unfair recruitment process. And the question I'm asking myself, you know some of those graduates, they are they're actually educating themselves, doing manual jobs, casual jobs. Some of those students, their parents have got to spend time on and off police cells because of brewing changa to take them to school. Others, like in my village, you do pottery. That is how I went to school. And I'm imagining if I did not get a job, what would have happened? So as a nominee, if you are approved, I want to hear about a structured approach to absorbing these graduates into the job market. Because if one graduate, we have graduates who graduated 10 years ago or more. And the reason why we saw them in the streets is because of unemployment. Some of them said, I'm even dead. I'm already dead. Because how do you employ somebody who graduated last year? And then there is an, another person who graduated 15 years ago, he's now 14 year, 46 years old, 40 years old, with a first class honors, and he's in the village. And his sibling is telling him, why are you even talking about education? I graduated 15 years ago, and I'm jobless. I mean, my brother graduated 15 years ago, and he's jobless. And you are here telling us about education. So we really need 
my friend, you need, this I think requires a multi-sectoral approach. Sit with your counterpart in public service. Sit with your counterpart in education. Probably borrow a leaf from TAC, where they say, first come, first serve. Why should this other guy, the parent has struggled as a degree, retire before getting a job? And somebody who graduated last year, because of the networks, the connections, gets a job before the other. And that takes me to the question of corruption. We, you must tell us how you're going to deal with the aspect of corruption so that there is equity in distribution of jobs, so that there is fairness in the manner we, 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 we actually procure, and so that there is no nepotism. That now, because it is Motua in this Ministry of Labor, it is only people from your region who will have to go to, to, to take these jobs in the US or in Germany. I think that is my concern. Once we address that as a country, then I can assure you we will not have young people in the streets. Thank you. Caleb. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have three questions, but I'll ask one. If I get an opportunity later, I'll ask the other two. I'll allow you to. Okay. Now, um, Mr. Speaker, I think uh, I have vetted the nominee before, and uh, of course, as a member of the Committee of Defense and Foreign Relations, we have interacted a lot. And uh, I'm not going to vet you based on what you're going to do. I'm now going to look at your history. You've said that you've worked in government for 20 years. And I want to give you some of the excerpts from what you've said in public while serving in those offices. When you were the spokesperson of Kibaki regime, there are press conference and pronouncement you made on Oscar Foundation. Two hours later, the officials were killed, assassinated. It gave the regime a bad name. Whether it was true or not, the pronouncement gave the regime a bad name. In the same regime, you also pronounced yourself to the visiting senator, Senator Obama, as a very small man that we should not bother about. He later became the president of the United States of America. It also gave your regime a bad name. Uh, later on, you also said that you want to rejuvenate the entertainment industry. And you started a Cobra Squad as one of the things that you knew this one is going to revitalize the, in the arts and the music industry. It performed poorly and later disappeared from the screen. In the same regime, we also, during the Kazi Kwavijana initiative, you said that all the old trees in town must be cut and instead replaced with flowers to beautify Nairobi, something that did not go on well with the environmentalists and the champions of tree planting. When you become the governor of Machakos, you started a program called Chap Chap, Maendeleo Chap Chap, bought ambulances and all that. Most of those programs flopped, and nothing much came out of it. You actually turned it into a party called Maendeleo Chap Chap instead of the Maendeleo itself. Later on, uh, during the stint as a governor, you once visited the State House with the right Honorable Raila Odinga, and you confessed that the be, then be, be fair to him, he was not, it was not a stint. He served two terms. Yes, two terms. Yes. So uh, ar around that time, you visited State House with the right Honorable Raila Odinga in a state event, and you said the president now serving, who was then the deputy president, squeezed your hand very hardly. And painfully, you even reported to the uh, Kilimani police station. Nothing came out of that case. Recently, as a minister for foreign affairs, on an X, what is now called X, it was called then Twitter, when Takie had a devastating earthquake where mil thousands of lives were lost, you promised on the behalf of the Kenyan government that food and the medicine will be donated to that country. Right now, even the officials of Kenya in Takie are embarrassed to face the government there because nothing was delivered. And it has embarrassed this country forever in terms of Takie and the Kenya relationship. And lastly, where you just came from as a minister for tourism, 
you said that all tourists arriving here must plant trees and they'll even have a fee on it to buy the local seedlings. Something that we don't know whether it was passed by the, the cabinet, where it was a road declaration. This one puts a lot of skeleton in your closet. What do you say about it? Yeah, thank you, Honorable Chairman. Let's, let you hold. I think that's quite a mouthful. Let's, uh, yeah. let's uh, have the, those two. <laughs> we have had, oh, it's three. Yes, yes. Daoud, Mary, and uh, Mrs. Chadshid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. So let me start with Honorable Dawood. Uh, yeah, just to clarify on the figures, is that uh, they were Ministry of Wild, the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife, especially the Department of Wildlife uh, through KWS, were advertising for tenders that are being given at an approximately three million shillings a kilometre. Which means when you have 300 uh, million as an allocation, you only have 100 kilometres. And by bringing it down to 850, Instead of 100 uh, kilometers, we're able to get 352 kilometers of fencing. And that saves money uh, for 90. Uh, about the jobs, and I'm glad because we were there during that meeting when the president talked about compensation to our people. We started the process. And uh, one of the challenges that we face in this country is bureaucracy. The president gives directives, and then they are caught in the annals of uh, bureaucracy, uh, treasury, uh, through the systems and going on. The process had started, and uh, I hope it will continue. We did not meet the target because of the normal bureaucracies of getting money from here to go here, even though the money is there, but it is something that will be uh, carried out. It's, uh, I like the fact that uh, you, ca you discussed the various disability and uh, the challenges that are there, and, in, and especially in, uh, in ensuring that people are, uh, are given the rights they deserve. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we uh, give you an example. I'll never forget this. During the campaign period, I accompanied His Excellency the President, then he was the Deputy President and a candidate, on an economic forum that was held at uh, Rescos with members of uh, people living with disabilities. And one lady spoke about the challenges she faces as an employee because her child has autism and the problem she faces because she can't even take time off for some of the things that need to be done to take care of that child. And the lack of support systems and the challenges that our people with disabilities go through. And uh, it was quite sad because I remember when the president stood to speak, he for about two minutes could not speak. His voice was choking. And he promised that people will not, in this country, go through the challenges they go through just because your child is disabled or you're, f you, you are, you're facing a form of disability. And my mandate, if approved and appointed and sworn in, is to ensure that that promise that the president gave, that I vividly remember, is enacted. And I think we will have done our job making sure that people live well. When I, be, when I was the government of Machakos, I was, I think, the only governor who enacted the uh, Disability Act by declaring that no building constructed Machakos or operating Machakos could operate without, uh, you know, places where would be comfortable for the disabled, for example, with ramps and others. And we shut down buildings. We shut down supermarkets until they build those ramps. I want to even take it further. I'll even have my own uh, rules, like the Michuki rules, showing people occupational health hazards, uh, disability, uh, things that need to be done. When somebody is uh, hard of seeing and they go into a building with lifts, including parliament, uh, why do they need somebody to come and help them identify which number? If you go to London, you go to Australia, even go to South Africa, the numbers on the keypads of pushing the buttons for a lift have braille. And so we need to standardize some of these issues so that the disabled can also live uh, a good life. Um, I want to reply to Madam Emerson, and I totally agree with her. Point you know, he has not answered one question. And, you know, he talked about the wildlife compensation bureaucracy. 
I want to put it to him, he's part of that bureaucracy, which he has not told us how much did he manage within the 60 days His Excellency gave him. And he's many, not talked about the job centers as well. I mean, how many did you pay in the time you are in tourism? In tourism, we processed and we have paid uh, close to a billion shillings. Uh, the pending human wildlife compensation that is there from uh, the 19, uh, from the 2015, 2020, we are looking at about 7 billion shillings that need to be paid. And you know, you pay according to the exchequer that you receive and the clearances that are given through the exchequer. Paid a million. We paid a billion. A billion. A billion shillings and the paying is still ongoing and the process are going. And I've been able to streamline and what we've done is that we've put together put together a scheme service and we got a scheme administrator. So it's not just the government officials sitting down with paperwork who now when there's uh, a human rights conflict We've even bought uh, ambulances, uh, not ambulances, sorry, uh, motorcycles for people to be able to visit the homes, take the documents digitally, and those are captured digitally so that there's no paperwork that has to go to the chief and all the process that takes six months so that the payment schedule is there waiting for the payment. And that's where we are. Uh, about the job uh, linkages is that, uh, as I answered earlier on, Mweshmoeshungwa, is to connect the people through proper communication and teaching people on how to do it. But also, let me take this opportunity to talk about that uh, we are not just about sending jobs of us, people to go overseas. We want to bring jobs here. And uh, outsourcing of jobs is an opportunity. Today, in the world, when you talk about labor migration, Philippines is leading. But from my research, Philippines is no longer is sending people overseas, but more people are getting jobs in Philippines, within Philippines grounds, by BPOs, you know? And we are going to, and I'm going to push if I'm confirmed, to get more companies to bring their outsourcing to Kenya for accounting services, for telemedicine services, for uh, telephony services, so that people can work from here for overseas farms, but in Kenya. And that can just be as many people as the ones that we are sending people overseas to work. So it's an area that I'm quite committed. Mwishmiwa Emase uh, had a very good point, and that is uh, clearly that uh, when, we, when Kenya Kwanzaa was campaigning, I remember the slogan uh, by yours truly, Mwishmiwa Speaker, that mtoto uh, maskini natajiri watakaa kwa meza moja. It is not just about who knows who in our country. And that is a system that you want to put into place. Uh, and the high unemployment uh, that we have here is also based on skill development because you need at times to retrain yourself to the market. You've studied to be an engineer and there's a finite number of employment opportunities for engineering. And if they're not there, they're not there. And so at times we need to show people how they can restudy and get new skills to add on to the skills that they have, and also how to be able to diversify. And so the area of skill development is very key. For example, uh, the issue of languages. Opportunities arise with languages, and one of the things that I'm going to push is for our TVETs and our skill development, so that as you learn to be an electrician, you're also learning a foreign language, German. You know, you're learning Spanish, you're learning Italian, so that by the time you're done and there's an opportunity in those foreign countries, you go and plug and play. At least you've got basic understanding of those languages. But also, we need to train people for ways they can get jobs. For example, Canada, when we had a discussion, had specifics say that for them, for plumbers or electricians, there are basic minimums that people need to have, certain ways of doing things, so that we have our curriculum based on the market. Uh, when I served as the Minister of Tourism and Wildlife, I started changing the way Utali works. Because Utali has been uh, churning people out with the same skills that they had from the 1970s and 80s. Vilu unapanga kitamba, vijiko, the way you cook, is the 70s and 80s. The world has changed. So that now, the market tells you these are the new international standards. So that when people leave Utali College, for example, or leave any TVET, they don't have to be retrained to work anywhere. So that it's plug and play. So that is uh, very important. Now, let me come to... Uh, the issue of corruption, and uh, I have always been known to be very fair in terms of work and labor. And I'm going to ensure, like what our president has told us, that you are, you are not 
he did not nominate me to be a cabinet secretary if approved of Ukambani or Machakos where I come from, but a cabinet secretary of the entire country. Because nobody sends a postcard to be born from Luya land or from Kisi land or from Turkana or from uh, Kiambu or from uh, Coast. Nobody sends a postcard to God. You, it's where you're born. And you have a right to receive government services properly without fear and favor. And it's the same way in terms of opportunities for jobs across the entire. So I'm going to work with my colleagues. And you know, our uh, president has been at the forefront of this. And if I'm getting an opportunity to join this cabinet, we're going to push this to ensure that there's equity in terms of people getting opportunities, especially also people suffering with disabilities and also our young men and women who can work. Honorable Caleb, uh, our speaker, has uh, given, made quite a few allegations, and I'm going to answer them one by one. And uh, it's unfortunate that most of them are basic propaganda, but I'm going to prove so. Number one, uh, the Oscar Foundation issue that happened was quite unfortunate. Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker. But it doesn't come at the end. As a Kenyan, no, I send a message that you took the former president of Machakos to launch a modern Dubai-like city. Uh, he's asking me to ask you, where is it? Uh, thank you. The, the Oscar Foundation uh, issue, we had a security meeting in the morning. And I want this to go on record. And uh, led by the head of public service then, police commission and others, as a government spokesperson. And we agreed that uh, this was a statement that was going to be issued. The president was briefed. I issued the statement uh, because uh, the legal practitioner and the, I think the DPP was preparing documents to be able to arrest and take them to court. Later on, after that statement, we heard about the murder or the shooting right outside parliament of uh, the people that, uh, that we had also mentioned. So it was pretty unfortunate and I had nothing to do with it. I was doing my job as agreed in a proper government system. Secondly, uh, Mr. Speaker, you have traveled to the US and like all, all houses of parliament and senate, when you go in, you go in as a freshman and then you are a sophomore and then you are a junior and then you are a senior. So you start in the US system as a sophomore, as, as, a, as a, you know, you start at the bottom and you work your way up. So you become now a senior senator, a senior uh, document. So when we got the letter from the American embassy about uh, former President Obama coming to Kenya, the title was the junior senator of Illinois, which in the US is actually a positive. It means you're not a freshman, you're not a sophomore, and that you're nearly a senior that you have graduated, you're actually high in rank. You're not a junior, you're, you're not, you know what I mean? So you're the junior senator, and that's the American system. And uh, I studied in the US myself, and that's a system even when you enter university. You're a, you're a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, and a senior. And so when we issued a statement uh, referring to the letter of the Americans talking about the junior senator of Illinois who visited. You look at my statement, that is how we were mentioning his, his title, and that is the title he had. It was nothing to do with demeaning uh, Obama, who we believed in. It had nothing to, to do with the comments he said. It was basically his title. You are a majority leader, you are a speaker, you are a minority leader. That's how it's a title that he had at that particular time. Number three, you asked about uh, Cobra Squad. Cobra Squad was a personal initiative, very successful. I want to say that I bought my house in Nairobi with proceeds from Cobra Squad and uh, went on to produce many other shows like Beba Beba, which I think you've seen it, and many other shows that my company still uh, produce and do other things. And uh, Cobra Squad was very successful even across Africa. Even today, I still get royalties from it being shown in Zambia, Tanzania, and many other countries. During our second season, after the end of our second season, one of our main actors unfortunately died in the fire that engulfed the former Nakumat that was at Moy Avenue. And it was felt that uh, we could not continue the third season after that tragedy. And that is how we stopped Cobra Squad, out of respect for the death of one of our workers. So, uh, Mushimwa Kaleb, it was not a failure, it was a success. 
big Sussex, but also we are people with a heart. About Kazi Kwa Vijana and uh, the tree planting and the organization, I took the former uh, mayor, uh, not mayor, town clerk, Agakuo, together with some colleagues to Dubai to look at how to beautify our country and the national parks. And I remember spending so much time planting trees in the streets of Nairobi. I even count some of the trees I pencil planted right here on Harambe Avenue and uh, over here. And we started an initiative to plant trees and, and beautify. Now, a decision was made that there will be an expressway, the existing expressway that is there, and that the trees on Uhuru Highway, because the expressway was going to pass on top, had to be removed to allow for the expressway and so that we have short bushes and brushes. And that was what was going on. It had nothing to do with uh, cutting down the environment. We were planting many more trees and reorganizing many other things. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to go on record. Something. Just a small point of order. You said you went to Dubai to see how to beautify a city. Dubai doesn't have any trees. It's a concrete jungle. So how did you learn that from Dubai? Uh, we found that in Dubai, they have, they have one of the best parks in the world with very big trees and amazing flowers and beauty that you can't believe it grows in a desert. And the challenge was, if it can grow in a desert, if this can grow in a desert, if you've been to Dubai, you've seen, you know, what they are able to do with the trees on the sideline, the palm trees and the forest, then you understand if you can do it in a desert, what about in a place where it rains more than the desert? And that was the lesson that was learned. Now, when it comes to my success in Machakos, I bought ambulances in Machakos that cut down the number, the time it took from a person from being taken to hospital from the half an hour to two hours on a border border to one to two to three minutes. When you call an ambulance in Machakos during my tenure, it took three to five minutes. We had one of the fastest, if not the fastest, response rate in the continent of Africa. Very successful. And it was so successful uh, that I was even given an award in Africa as the best governor in the continent of Africa. And the ambulances are still there in Machakos. And they're extremely successful. And the health system that I set up in Machakos, including building the first cancer ward, uh, the cancer center, which treated people free of charge uh, when you have cancer, to show that you don't have to have money to continue, has been quite successful. My track record in Machakos is known all over, the, all over this country. And all you need to do is just visit Machakos and as governor. And you could see the things that we did, the roads that we built, uh, the markets that we established, the stadiums that we put together, and you'll be able to see the track record. There are naysayers, people in the opposite, Yes, Nelson. I don't know what's happening with Andre Bambui and Andre Bamule. Is, is it something they know? Because they, they are laughing sheepishly. <laughs> Why are you giggling? Or, 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 or politics of Ugabani? Mr. Mr. Speaker, I didn't want to make any comment, but uh, I was a member of parliament of Kadiani, which is in Machakos, when the Honorable Mutua was governor. And uh, I mean, this is sounding like a movie. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you know, go on, go on. When I go on in, from where you left. Yes, when I worked in Machakos, I did amazing things like build the People's Park, the ambulances, and uh, there was a big opposition. And uh, because I was talking and doing things that they only see in movies, uh, they even started calling me Mutua Cinema because they only see it in movies. And uh, the people of Machakos were so happy, regardless of their campaigning against me, that they reelected me for a second term. Very, very successful, uh, and I uh, beat them hands down, actually. And so I, I, I would challenge, Mr. Speaker, the people of Machakos who benefited. In actual fact, Mr. Speaker, uh, there was a, there's a small problem happening in Machakos right now, and that is that uh, I, was, uh, I was approached by the officer in charge of registration uh, when I was completing my term and said that there's going to be a problem because a lot of children being born in Machakos are now called Alfred Mutua. But I said they are not mine. And they said it's because most of them now are born in ambulances that you put into place. Because before, in Machakos now, you don't find child's children called in Zilani because they are born by the side of the road, you know, or others. Because now people have that dignity. 
Uh, moving on to the question of uh, the squeezing of my, my, my hand, Mweshimu uh, Aruto uh, later introduced me to Zimushimu Anyonyi from Damu uh, Onyama, who, who, who uh, I, I felt his grip of the hand and I realized it was not actually squeezing of the hand. The, there's a person who can really squeeze the blood out of your hands. And uh, it was put during this, the political times. It was a political move at the time. Now about Turkey, um, I'm surprised by the comments made by... It is not called Turkey, it's Turkey. It's only written Turkey, but it's pronounced Turkey. <laughs> thank you. I, that I, is the name of the country. Thank you. I believe you meant the country of Istanbul and uh, Ankara. Yes, yes, yes. It's called Turkey in English, Turkey in Arabic. Yeah, yeah, that's the country. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand guided. Yeah. It is only that... Uh, let, lately, lately they have been and trying if you to push for that. Is called Uturuki. Uturuki. Yes. So Turkey, Uturuki, Turkey, depending on who is uh, mentioning it from their end, uh, I met and uh, the ambassador who came, and we galvanized support for Turkey, and even we involved different government agencies for Turkey. Sorry, we've been calling it Turkey for Turkey. So um, I'm surprised saying that our officers are embarrassed, yet we are able to work with them. Even our president issued his uh, condolences and talked of the support that we are working. And we've been working, worked very well with the ambassador from Turkey. I'll be surprised, uh, even the ambassador will be surprised to hear of, of such. When I talked about all tourists uh, planting trees, we said tourists will be given an opportunity and to urge the hotels Point of that order, when uh, uh, because it is a matter that was in public domain and it came f directly from the minister's uh, handle, you could uh, maybe explain how you delivered the goods because according to them nothing came. They are embarrassed to see the king. There is always everybody who promised delivered except Kenya. And it has put our nation at a very embarrassing position because of your comment. Uh, mean the food to Turkey? Yes. Mr. Speaker, if I remember right, we even uh, were able to galvanize uh, blankets and rice and other items that were sent. So I'll, I'll look into it to find out uh, where Honorable Caleb is receiving that information from. It's, it's, it's a surprise to me. I'm hearing it for the first time uh, from him because I've not heard of any complaints, and we worked very well as a government to help our brothers and sisters who have also always stood with us. And uh, H is that uh, tourists to plant trees. We issued and we said that uh, we are going to encourage tourists coming to our country and hotels. And I had a meeting with its stakeholders to be given an opportunity to plant trees and even came up with a formula which they have actually been using where you are asked when you come in, do you want to add 20 shillings to your bill so that uh, you, that 20 or 50 shillings is for a tree where you can plant and they can show you to plant. And that is something that now is starting to take traction as it continues. So it was not physical planting of trees. It was fundraising for it tree planting. It was fundraising for tree planting. And for the ones who wanted to plant trees, we had even designated an area uh, at uh, Nairobi National Park where people could go and plant trees. Because some of them are so keen on the environment to go and plant. And the idea was to showcase where Kenya is in terms of environmental uh, protection. It's an opportunity for people. And many people are very happy to be given that opportunity. And I know, uh, honorable members, you've gone to places where after you make a payment, they ask you, do you want to add 50 shillings for this? Do you want to add 70 shillings for this? So it was that opportunity to be able to serve. Point of order. And lastly. Was that man accounted for? Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask, Speaker. When you say fundraise, was it an approved uh, cabinet decision? And if it was, how much has been raised up to now? Sorry, uh, Mr. Speaker, not fundraise, but be able to give people an opportunity. For example, if you come to a hotel and the hotel tells you, we have seedlings for you to be able to plant a tree. Uh, and the seedling costs 50 shillings. Whether you can plant a tree or somebody plants a tree, do you want to contribute to it? You say no, 
That's it. You say yes, then you ask, do you want to be able to go out and plant the tree, or do you want the hotel to plant the tree? So it's all about, and we are, the government has been collecting numbers, and will be continuing collecting numbers from all stakeholders who have uh, engaged in tree planting. like the little change you throw in a basket in a, in a supermarket? Something like that? So, yeah, but, but you're given an opportunity to say, yes, I want to be able to plant a tree myself. Mm -hmm. And many people opt to say, well, I don't have time to plant the trees, but can somebody else from the hotel plant the trees? And the hotels will be able to galvanize and say, as a hotel industry, as a, the, we have planted Go trees. On. And this is something we had agreed with, with the industry. So it was not just me speaking. It was about an agreement with the industry. And lastly, Mr. Speaker, and I th let it be go on record here because Many dreams of our Kenyans are destroyed by selfishness of leaders. And forgive me for saying this. When we came up with a program of Machako's new city, we brought investors who signed MOUs worth 2.1 trillion shillings to bring investment, not just in Machako's, but across the country, using Machako's uh, land that was available and other systems. And we started the process. Mweshmiwa Johnston Mudama and the Waipa Party went to court and got an injunction against point us. Of order, point of order, Chairman. Point of order, Chairman. Yes, he, because he's just named my party. Uh, let him finish. He just then mentioned my party. I'll give you an opportunity. Oh. Let him finish what. Uh, and. Uh, and I want uh, go on, go on, uh, yeah. nominee. They went to court and put an injunction, and an injunction was issued by court that we cannot proceed with that program until the process, until the court rules otherwise. The court took five years. Justice uh, delayed is justice denied. Despite that, we were able to continue. And when the court ruled, and remember it was uh, Justice Odunga, because I have the, the court case, when he threw out that suit and said actually it had rendered uh, the people of Machakos poorer over time, because all those investments were lost. They went to Rwanda, they went to Ghana, they went to South Africa. Today, as we sit here, some of the problems we are facing with Gen Zs is because we've not been able to grow opportunities for them to work. That was a valid dream that was stopped by leaders who are more concerned about political clout of one or another rather than taking care of the people of this country. We have to be able to be selfless to know that some programs, you may not support them, but they are good for the country. And we support them because they provide employment and opportunities for others. We lost, uh, I mean, the, the, the person who is built Dubai Mall, he came and uh, he committed uh, $400 million. That is the one that had a component of Formula One? Yes. Yes. The same component, he had committed to put a sports city and hotel system and everything and even connect the highway uh, from Machakos all way. He came, he met the president, he met us. I went to Dubai, we signed an MOU, and the MOU is still there with him. But when he went to court, he took his money to Rwanda and the rest of the money he took to Angola. Who lost? The Kenyan poor. The Gen Zs were demonstrating yes, because no, of that. What is your point of order? My, my point of order, Chair, and I want, uh, I want Kenyans chair. to listen keenly to this. Yes. Uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker, mm -hmm. the, 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 the nominee has accused the Wiper Party of taking him to court. Now, at the point when he came up with this proposal, he had just been elected as Governor Machakos County on a Wiper ticket. I was also elected as a member of parliament on the same party ticket. I was not involved in any issue to do with that, that with, with, with a court case. Neither was a party because the party decision would have been taken at the national election uh, and national uh, the next executive council. So when he says that the Wiper Party took him to court, he's being economical with the truth. I do agree that the senator of Machakos, who was also a Wiper member may have been involved, but not the party. I would like to see some evidence that puts the party in court against him. Let's uh, settle that the senator who went to court belonged to Wiper Party, but it may not have been the Wiper Party that took him to court, so that we make progress. I, and, uh, who are the parties to the case? You say you have the case? Yes, it was... Uh, who was the plaintiff? It was uh, Senator Mudama. Yes. And... Uh, 
and to Zeta Mudama, and he's, when he went to court, he said he represented the views of his party and the party machinery. So I withdraw, and so we leave it as Zeta Mudama. And, uh, but you see, your, Mr. Speaker, sir, yes. uh, this was done because, from my perspective, I may be wrong, it was felt that if Mutua is able to achieve this greatness, then uh, it will deny others uh, uh, clout. And, and I'm just I'm saying I may be wrong. I'm just saying that uh, I felt that the reason that was stopped is because it was felt that I needed to be put in my place put so that check. I do not overtake, overtake other order, leaders in terms of uh, supremacy. So I, I just feel that uh, it shouldn't have come to that. Mm. Point of order. Point of order. Yes, uh, David, David Speaker. Uh, I hope that the nominee knows that you're actually under oath, huh? so you risk perjuring yourself. You do realize uh, that. Would, legal advice. That would, Can the nominee confirm he was chosen on which party uh, in 2013? Was it Wiper or any other party? He already said he was elected on Wiper. Okay, let's, let's make Shuria, let's make order, Shuria. I think, Chairman, I'll just suggest if the nominee could just stick to the issue of his, uh, rather than just going into politics, just to save us time and also. Yes, uh, you are finished answering to all the counts on uh, Mrs. Churchill. Now let's go to Mishi. Yes, sir, Mishi. He has answered everything, yeah, including yeah, the one um, that was sent in by a member of the public. Not, it's not a, um, yes. a court case. Yes. The reason why I've pushed all those is, is because of your history. And you know, there is developmental stage. You can't just go to a country, copy something, and replicate it, and you think it will work. So it puts the office you are holding in jeopardy, the name of the country, the name of the uh, you know, citizens, because of the theatrics manner or melodramatic manner you operate in your office. That's why I brought out those issues. I'll take the next three, Mishi, Honorable Mishi, Honorable yeah. Shuria, and Honorable Raso. Thank you. Working there, ranging from denying of food, beaten to death, taken to jail, under unnecessary circumstances. Honorable Chairman, just recently, and I want to say thank you to you because you're among those people who assisted me together with the Cabinet Secretary, Prime Minister uh, Musalia Mudavadi, to bring the body of one of my electorates, a lady who was working in Saudi Arabia, travel with his employer to Egypt. Mm -hmm. And after two days, he died under unclear circumstances. It took us one and a half month to have the body brought to Nairobi, then transferred to Mombasa. Honorable Chairman, I know there have been some reforms regarding the same issues, but I'm feeling that somehow there's no law enforcement, and I believe there are what we call international labor standards or labor laws, and we also have those who are domestic. And most of the time you are talking about this issue, we are putting some reforms, but yet nothing has been done. In the reports of that case which I've just mentioned, it has written that the death of this lady is under investigation. And this is not the first time. I had another previous case some months back it had the same report that it is under investigation. But after that, there is no feedback, there is nothing, and it's just like that and no justice is achieved on that. So my question is, do we have some protocol where should be followed in case of such uh, unfortunate happenings that the family maybe need to follow so that they, to ensure that they get the body at good time for us as Muslim. You can imagine she was a Muslim and she had to stay in mortuary for almost one month and a half for her to come back to Kenya. So I'm like, this is an area where we have to put some policies or rather some measures. And I know we have some impediment because some of the countries, maybe they are not subscribing to the United Nations and especially on universal human rights law. And that is why it became very difficult. We have been putting so many resolutions at the international level regarding this issue of human rights violation. But still these cases keep on happening each and every time. And yet we don't know. This family, 
they're just there, they get the body, nothing is being told to them, and sometimes even they don't get the belongings of that person. They just receive the body, and that is all. Some of them, they're denying their passport. The passport are confiscated. Some of them, they're rendered jobless. They had to go and sleep in the mosque and in the street in Saudi Arabia. So I think this is a matter which you really need to deal with. My second question. He can only do so if he's confirmed. Yeah, if you are confirmed, that yeah. is. And my second question is, apply to address the challenges faced by online job seekers in Kenya, utilizing the Ajira platform which the government of Kenya Kwanza has initiated. But I know it has been marred by so many challenges uh, from digital infrastructure, especially in the rural area, lack of digital literacy, fraudulent job seekers, job offers, I mean job offers, whereby our youth have lost millions and nothing has been done on that. What kind of intervention will you implement to tackle these challenges and ensure equitable access to online employment opportunity to all our Kenyans and more so protect them from these fraudulent offers? Thank on you. a light note, on a light note, because now maybe you're going to be confirmed as Waziri, for labor and social protection. Kenyans are thinking that you should minimize this drama, especially on your marital status, because somehow they can jeopardize your character or put you in a very negative situation. Because now we want to see that even order. our cabinet secretaries order, have you, you point of order. about opulence. Order, yes. I think there is no requirement for one to be married to be considered for public office in this country. I'm I, I, saying that drama, there'll be some drama. You have talked about opulence. You talked about opulence on Murchumba Murkomen. You talked about opulence order. on Orebol Jogo. This committee will not open anybody's bedroom. <laughs> Shuria. Shuria, <laughs> Shuria, stop laughing and ask your question. I think, Ch Chairman, it's best you protect people's bedrooms, as you said. We don't want those matters coming out here in the public. I think. <laughs> the nominee, you will not comment on that. Th thank Go you. On, uh, thank, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I think Caleb came up with a very long list, and I just want to maybe in future he might get another opportunity. Moshimiwa, if approved, what key results or deliverables can Kenyans expect from you in the short, medium, and long term? I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Raso and then Mule. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Alfred, you are the governor of uh, Machakos, and also you are government spokesman. Uh, during those two stints, we were able to follow you. You were able to publicize what you are doing, the government agenda, when you are the spokesman. Uh, but once you were vetted by this committee and you appointed a cabinet secretary, you just slowly faded away. Uh, is it that maybe it is comfort zone to be a cabinet secretary? Or the dockets that you occupy were, were not really engaging? Because Article 152, clearly says what is cabinet. The president, the deputy president, the attorney general, and 14 to 21 cabinet secretaries. Those are the people who run government. And because of uh, your background, we expected you to really support the government you are serving, particularly in advising them on the area of communication. Because you are, uh, you are, your PhD is on communication. So maybe you will comment on that. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I, I need to ask something on labor. Not preamble, because I am just asking two questions because of time. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Alfred, uh, my second question. We had two generals in the army, the late General Mlinge, General Mahmoud, during the rec army recruitment, 
recruiting officers will go to an area and they will say, look out for this tribe because they were looking out for the minorities, that minorities should not be excluded from the army. When we come to uh, the ministry, if the House approves you, the ministry you are likely to go to, labor. Do we have systems in place to monitor, to evaluate, to look for minorities? Because I think it's not good enough to just speak on uh, the radio, the social media, or uh, the Gazette. And yet a lot of youngsters who are in the rural areas do not have access to many of these things. So if the House approves your nomination, what is it that you are likely to do? that there is regional balance, ethnic balance, uh, and a lot of youngsters will be able to get opportunity in Kenya and even overseas. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, thank you and very no much. drama. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I stand guided. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I want to ask the nominee. Uh, this country, and I want you tell the civil servants in this government, there have been unrest in different cadres, doctors, nurses, uh, lab technologists, electricians, whatever. And once there is unrest between a labor dispute, there is always a negotiation and an agreement is arrived. But Time and again, you'll come and hear that the same union claiming that the government is not honoring uh, the agreements. As you get into this ministry, can you tell Kenyans what will you do to make sure that every agreement between the civil servant and the government of the day are implemented to the letter, not to leave it just to unions, not to leave it to the ministry itself, not to leave it, even we saw the last one for doctors, whereby we have a ministry for labor, but the, 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 the head of public service had to come in for negotiation. When we have a standalone ministry for labor, please, if you are approved by this committee, tell Kenyans today how you will do differently to make sure that we don't get this embarrassment to the employees of government. Nominee, you can answer those from Honorable Mishi, Shurie, Raso, and Mule. I, I want to agree with Honorable Mishi about the gravity of the issues. I have done my research and I've realized that uh, our children are going to countries where we don't really have agreements with those countries about how to operate and what needs to be operated. This used to be a big problem also because I remember I sat on this seat, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I promise that if confirmed and appointed as a Minister of Foreign Affairs, my first trip would be to Saudi Arabia, and I did that. I went to Saudi Arabia, I met Kenyans, I met people who are suffering, and we started the process of changing, and a bilateral labor agreement is to be signed between Kenya and Saudi Arabia and some of these countries, which I will push for. One of the things that I would like to do is also get lawyers, our lawyers are from the Attorney General's office, to go to some of these countries and study and understand their laws. Because we need to know what we are dealing with. Because what we may think here is important may not be covered in their laws. So that we can also be able to know how to navigate uh, those countries. Because we can't go and impose our laws to them. And uh, we see how we can work with them. Especially if they are not signatories of international conventions that we are signatories to. Uh, and the protocols that it may measure. And my apologies that, you know, you've had to go through many of these challenges where people die and they can't even get their things to be brought uh, back home. It is also important also uh, about online job seekers, going with the question by Honorable Ishungwa. It's, it's all about communication. People to know how to do it. But I want to set up a proper portal 
that will answer many things, so that you look at available opportunities, but also to weed out all these crooked agencies. We we'll publish as a government a portal and lists, which you can even put in the newspapers, of the approved agencies. Because people keep on asking, uh, is this right? Canada So that now any advertisement without the name of uh, of a company, uh, we can be dealt with, you know, according to the law, because they'll be lying to people. And if there is a name of a company, people can cross-check the government website or government documents and be able to verify that that is a recognised and proper company. And uh, don't be surprised if we have to knock out a few companies and bring more in that are straightforward so that they, they don't lie to our people. So we're looking at uh, a one-stop shop in terms of connecting people to jobs. Moshmiwa uh, Shurie, I was saving this for the end, but thank you for your very good question. And that is that uh, I want to change how workers view the workspace. I want people to be comfortable when they go to work. I want to be able to get employers to provide for the employees good working conditions. Whether you're a house help, a doctor, a security guard, everybody, you should feel that you have got a system that protects you and uh, that you work in a good environment. I also want to work with the employers so that we can see what we can do as government, remove some bureaucracy so that they can expand. I want to call upon them and see how we can be able to see uh, create an opportunity for them to employ more people, cut down or maybe forego some little profit to employ one or two people using the principle of consumer spending so that you get more people spending people in the market to grow uh, the industry. So I want to look at some of those things. The labor migration, I want to move the numbers from the, uh, the ones that are there to about 5,000 uh, a week. Uh, if we can get there to 10,000 a week eventually, people going overseas. But to do this, I will want to work closely with all of you. I want to work closely with all members of parliament. I want it to be constituency-led so that we can have quarters and we know that this constituency where you come from, where all members of parliament come from, can provide people who we can now send overseas so that you as leaders can take the lead in identifying and maybe helping people on the ground to be able to be recruited to go overseas and get jobs. When it comes also to BPOs uh, setting up centers, we don't want somebody to come all the way from Nyanza, uh, where Mwishmua Junet comes from, to Nairobi to get an online job or to get a job in a, in a call center. We'd like to set up call centers in every constituency so that you can be able to see how it's working. Because now with internet connectivity, you don't need to be in the big cities for you to be able to get some of these opportunities. When it comes to uh, Employment Act, we need to overhaul the Employment Act. We have offices uh, across that uh, will need to look at how they perform and how they work. And I uh, want to motivate my staff to work well. And the issues of social protection, we have to ensure that our people do not fall through the cracks. We want to be able to provide opportunities for our people so that uh, COVID has taught us when there's hardship, there's something to, to be able to, to fall back into. In the United States, in Australia and other developed countries, there's even uh, money given to people who are unemployed, unemployment benefit. We are not there yet, but we can start putting the structures to get there by getting a lot of these laws and policies that are pending that to be uh, fast-tracked so that we can increase uh, entertainment. Moshimua Kaleb talked about uh, my interest in the film industry. And uh, you know, Hollywood was not built by money from donors, but by money from uh, entertainment. And this is an area we can uh, galvanize on, you know, get the entertainment sector to grow in our country. It can be a huge employer. Uh, the sports industry, I work with a lot, many of my colleagues to ensure that there's job creation, because as a means of labor, we are cross-cutting in terms of ensuring that people are able to work. There's a question about uh, equity and uh, and expanded government. And one of the things that I'd like to do is that uh, we have to start publishing data that uh, shows the inclusion of everybody in our government in different areas. I think that is critical. So that people may have the idea that they are not included, it's good for them to know that they're included. So that's one thing that I'd like to do is constant publishing of data. 
Uh, there was a question about, uh, Shri asked me about the question, or also, uh, also about comfort zone. Um, I'm not in a comfort zone. Uh, but you see, when you're a governor, you head your own government. So you can shout as much as you want. When you're a government spokesperson, you have the authority to speak as much as you can. When you work as a cabinet secretary, you are also uh, toned down kidogo because you're working for a boss or bosses. But I think uh, the lessons that we've learned is that we really need to communicate. And I want to uh, promise the country that uh, you will see uh, the mutua who communicates, communicate much more, especially in this new docket if confirmed and uh, sworn in. Thank you. Uh, lastly, uh, Mr. Speaker, Mwishmiwa Mule uh, had a very good uh, suggestion. Thank you very much. And the civil servants unrest and the work conditions. The Labor Ministry will be dealing as a, an arbitrator, even looking at the public service and holding the public service to account in terms of what they do in terms of these agreements. I saw it in Machakos. As soon as I enacted the agreement that we had agreed on, the nurses and doctors were very happy with me. They took their riots elsewhere. So don't enter into an agreement, is what I'll be telling everybody, that you know you cannot meet. You know, and it's good. And our Kenyans are reasonable, especially if you meet them early. And uh, it is harder to sort out an issue when people are on the streets. It is easier to sort out an issue before a uh, strike notice is issued. And I'm going for that uh, early warning system so I can work with the industry. And some of them have already reached out to me. They're saying if you're appointed, if you are vetted and you go through, we'd like to come and meet you because they are festering wounds. And so I'll open my door to meeting and so we turn down a lot of these issues. I submit. Chairman. Nelson Koech. Yes. Posing. Yeah, thank you, Speaker. Um, nominee Honorable uh, Mutua. Uh, my, my question is this. If you look at the ministry, or when people look at the ministry you are going in, not your ministry, should you be uh, approved? Ministry of Labor and Social Services. People only see the minister, there's an argument that people only see the minister during strikes. So it's almost being called what somebody told me. It's called a strikes ministry or a firefighting ministry. That's the only time people can be able to engage or see the minister for, for uh, this Ministry of Labor and Social Services. Honorable Mutua, tell Kenyans who are watching you and us and this committee to be able to look at how to uh, uh, analyze you for suitability in accordance with Section 7 of the Act. What else is expected of this ministry that people, Kenyans don't know? Maybe they have not been communicated, or Kenyans can expect from you so that they don't see Honorable Motua today in the vetting. Should you be approved? They only see again Honorable Motua during what? Firefighting, when there's a strike in this country, and then they see oh, there's somebody called Motua. What else will Kenyans expect out of you, Honorable Motua, within your ministry that is not of strike? Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Karia. Thank you, Chair. There are industries that exploit uh, workers, mostly the casual labor, by paying them below the stated remuneration rates denying them the union rights and health uh, benefits, exploiting them to unsafe work, uh, exposing them to unsafe uh, working uh, environment. What measures will you uh, uh, take to address this? And secondly, it's about the street families. Uh, now with the new constitution, we used to have the rehabilita rehabilitation trust fund. But that was run under the Local Government Act, which is no longer in force. But the street families uh, keep on growing day by day. What action will you take first to reduce these numbers or even to address? Uh, because most of these families, not that they don't have, you, you find kids on the street, but they go back home. Or even now find a family, a mother with children on the streets. So what are you going to do to address this very, very uh, uh, needy issue that uh, we need to take our kids back to school? Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Answer those two quickly. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to say that uh, in terms of uh, labor and social protection, I agree with uh, Mwishmiwa Kosing, 
that uh, people only see when there are riots. Now, I'm going to uh, go around this country. I want to visit all the constituencies to talk to Kenyans and especially young people about the opportunities that are there. Kenyans are not lazy. Our young people are very active and very smart and very sharp, but they need opportunities, not handouts. And so I'll be traveling to all the counties. You'll see me. I'll be very heavily on media, telling to them about the jobs, the kind of skill development. I'll also be looking at the working conditions of factories. Do not be surprised if one or two or three factories are shut down because of uh, poor working conditions that uh, go even against the international tenants because we have to make sure that our people are respected in the way they work. In terms of even employment and the benefits, there's the issue of the 6% increment that the president offered that is still pending and it's, I, I think it will be on my desk. I'll be able to sit down with FKE. I've had a chat with uh, Kotu, Mweshmiwa Atoli. I've talked to the employers. We're looking and uh, they have told me all the problems. I was doing my research and I'll be able to sit down, bring everybody together and gazette in uh, the salaries that they deserve because of the state of the economy and be able to improve that and make sure that those are, those are met. So I'll be very, very active, uh, Mweshmiwa. And uh, I think you'll be very proud of me and the work that I'll be able to if I'm, con if I'm confirmed. Mweshmiwa Gikari, uh, I think I've answered the, the same question uh, as, uh, because it is important for us. Now, in street families, um, I, was, I was very active on as government spokesperson uh, to try and work on a system of removing uh, street families and rehabilitating them. I want to go back to some of the programs that we started at that time in the government of Mze uh, Mwai Kibaki. And uh, my investigation has shown that it has become uh, a, a normal, uh, you know, you, normal, normal process. I've looked at the different uh, acts and laws that are there, and it's all about implementation. We are going to set up a target as a country and say that by this time, we need to have done A, B, C, D so that we don't have street families and be able to rehabilitate and even take people back to the countryside where they came from so that we can reunite them with their families, so that people can continue working with their families the way we are doing in the children's sector. Instead of taking people to orphans, orphanages, we reunite them with the uh, families. Uh, Mweshmiwa uh, Mbui will be very happy to know that we are building, uh, we want to develop a model rehabilitation center in Mavoko, which is very close to Kadiani. Uh, that you are is building land, a rehabilitation center okay. uh, in Mavoko. There is 20 acres there. I'll be sourcing for funds from development partners and others so that we have a place whereby these children can go before they are taken back to their families to be trained and taught and also growth and a follow-up system so that we, we remove them. It is quite sad. Like now it's very cold to find people suffering in the streets and we'll need to put up shelters that they do in other places whereby people can go and receive some food and that safety net for uh, the very poor in our country. I submit. Chairman, I have one stressing, just one, a small one, very stressing. Yes. All of us as a country. Ya yeah, kuna hili yes, swala moja, waziri mteule iwapo utachaguliwa katika wizarahi ya wafanyakazi. Kuna swala nyeti ambalo, wafanyakazi wa IPZ walijiunga katika chama cha wafanyakazi. Na hivo sasa kufikia sasa wafanyakazi elfu nne wamefutwa kazi katika viwanda viwili vya IPZ huko eneo bunge la changamwe. Kwa kujiunga na chama cha wafanyakazi na hata wizara yako ina tarifa hiyo, Kwa hivyo tunaomba iwapo utaweza kuchaguliwa uangalie swala hili litaweza kutatuliwa na kuona haki za wakenya hawa zimefanikishwa. Asante mwishimu wa speaker. Yes, uh, Owen. Uh, Honorable honor, uh, honor speaker, nominee, uh, a, a, briefly, just tell us about your vision for the NSSF. I think it is an area that has not been touched. Daud. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, if you are confirmed, how will you uh, pursue qualifications, equivalency, uh, so that our qualified Kenyan professionals can move across the globe and sort the menace of unemployed professionals, such as doctors and others? This is a question from one of the Kenyans. There's one. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Just a quick one. Uh, nominee, National Employment Authority. No wonder you didn't know whether it exists. Actually, it is somewhere in Kasarani. Just in case you are confirmed, it must be at a central place where all Kenyans will be able to access it. 
uh, Amisi? Uh, chair. Just one, uh, Mwishmua Speaker. Just one from a Kenyan. Uh, on the collective labor bargaining agreements, I'm uh, wondering why they are never implemented, and that's what makes workers keep on uh, uh, seeking attention of the authorities every other day, and especially the presidential pronouncements on Labor Day. There is always an increment, but it's never implemented. Like last time, it's six percent. Is it eight percent? But up to now, it's not been um, implemented. So, what difference are you going to make in that regard? Nice one. Uh, chair. Someone is uh, asking, there are quotas for people living with disability in the constituencies for a certain number of people living with disability to get the stipend. And the question is, where do we take the rest in our country? Just like the old who, when they turn 70, it should be automatic upon medical confirmation that then all people living with disability in our constituencies should be uh, taken on board. And the last question is kindly ask Alfred Mutua this question. Upon confirmation, you should go to those foreign countries and negotiate with tech companies to allow Kenyan citizens work for them from Kenya without using VPNs and residential proxies. There are a lot of job opportunities in the tech industry, but we can't access them due to location restriction. They are very many from transcription, captioning, machine learning, data entry, chatting, software development, ETC, instead of exporting labor. Yeah, sure. We must thank you. Somewhere. Yes, this is from a Kenyan who actually states that the nominee is excessively abrasive, especially to junior officers, and it quotes an incident at the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Diaspora, where you actually threw out officers from the parking lot for no good reason whatsoever and without any consultations. These were junior officers. Is that true? A speaker, just one from the teachers. Yes, Mole. Uh, this is from the teachers fraternity in Kenya. They are asking, uh, let them, uh, uh, you tell them how you will avert uh, the incoming strike, because you have said you want to arrest the strikes before they happen. So they want to hear the mechanism which we'll use uh, when, uh, when you, you, are, you are approved. Then there is, uh, they are also saying that, uh, kindly ask uh, Dr. Mutua, he meant pronouncement that resulted up on Kenyan's troops going to Haiti when he visited the US. Does he regret making such deals which later landed him in trouble with the head of, head of state to the extent he was shifted to another docket? How true that it is, I don't know, but it's from the public. That you, uh, Mole, you are not being fair to Mutua the nominee, the Kenyan police going to Haiti was approved by parliament, so it can't be his responsibility. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, it's only uh, one short one on uh, uh, these uh, constituents asking about what the nominee will do if approved, about those rogue labor officers at, uh, who are at the ground there. Who, ne who are compromised by most of these uh, industrial industrialists. Yes, uh, Nomini, can you very quickly respond to those? Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll We're start with the it. Honorable Lesuda's issue about uh, uh, quotas for poor disability. This is true. It is quite unfortunate, and I find it very, uh, in my research, unfair that uh, you're only giving to a certain percentage in a household and not to everyone. So one of the things I'll do is make sure that it is everyone that is covered. Uh, and we roll it out according to the finances that we have. It should go to all, not just few. The president has given directives that we increase the numbers by 500,000, and I'm going to make sure that these are captured in there. The other thing is to work also with parliament to see, not parliament, but treasury, the monies that are recovered out of attrition, people die, so they can be rolled into other programs without them having to go back to treasury and never coming again. Uh, in terms of uh, tech, that's what I was talking about, the BPOs. And um, yes, I'll travel. I'll send meetings. I don't even have to go anywhere anymore because you can travel by Zoom nowadays and get those jobs here. 
we need the jobs here. In as much as we also want Kenyans to go overseas, we want to have those jobs in Kenya. And so we're going to remove all the bottlenecks, and I'll have a cabinet paper to remove the bottlenecks and provide opportunities for people here. Uh, Murugara, you had a question about being abrasive. Uh, that is somebody just being mischievous and trying to use this, this house. People love me <laughs> very much. All my employees, you go to means of tourism, you go to foreign affairs, you go to everywhere I've worked. Employees love me. Allow very, them to say so. I'm, I'm very, Don't, yeah, uh, self-declaration. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> because I really care. And I've always talked about the welfare of employees. One time I'm on record asking, in a kuwasha nini kama mwenzako anapata nyongeza mshahara ama anapata chuo nyingine? In a kuwasha nini if your fellow worker moves forward? Why do we keep on constraining people so they cannot get promotions? Why does it, that person is a father and a mother to somebody else? So I have very good working conditions. What happened in foreign affairs, and uh, my speaker, you know you've served there, is that there are vehicles all parked outside uh, the parking lot, such that it looked like a car park instead of an office, because they have parking lots. And I got in, I said, you cannot have the image of the foreign office where you have ambassadors coming, foreign dignitaries, and the cars are covering looking everywhere. Looking like a terminus. Yeah, looking like a terminus. <laughs> and so we, we said we move the cars away and the ministry to provide another place for the cars to be parked. And that is what has happened. But you know, people, uh, they, they don't want change. They want that comfort. And they don't understand. Now, if you try to take the cars back there, they'll fight you. They'll tell you, no, we like it the way it is now, because it's, it looks better. So it was a good move. That is somebody who is just being mischievous and trying to take these opportunities. But uh, uh, I remember when I left Foreign Affairs, some officers came to see me, and they were crying. They were sad I was leaving. So I don't understand about being aggressive. I'm very, very polite to everyone. About uh, the teacher strike, Moshima Mule, I'm going to call for a meeting uh, if I go through this process and meet with them. And I want to tell teachers in this country that I will listen to you, I respect teachers, and will iron out. There are no issues, because even if you do a strike, even if you do manda mano, you will still have to sit down. Why don't we sit down early and sort these issues? And I'm very fair, and I'll ensure fairness. And uh, in terms of... Um, the issues of uh, qualifications and verification. Uh, we have a skill development uh, system that uh, I've studied and I've looked at it. I'm going to enhance it because what happens is that you want to be a doctor in Australia, even though you're in the Commonwealth, you still have to go through rigorous testing. And so it's to enter into agreements that you can go and work in these other places without having to go through the same retesting. But that is also improving the quality of how we do things in our country. Submit. Nominee, I've also received a few uh, issues from Kenyans out there watching this. Uh, they ask, will you ensure that employees ensure their employees, so the employers ensure their employees? What are you going to do about skewed funding between Child Welfare Society and Children's Department? UHC staff who have been on contract for long with half salaries, what are you going to do that? Where the, some elder Kenyan <coughs> has said, I think to all of us, where are the issues of older persons in this interview? If confirmed now to you, what will you do for the welfare of older people in Kenya? Another part, you asked? Okay, Robert asked that. Another person, I think this must be from Naivasha, there are serious labor problems in the flower sector. What will you do if confirmed? Another one says, what will the nominee do, or what does he say about the minimum wage proposal of 30,000 for security workers? Another one, and this is, uh, says contractual jobs in Kenya, don't have retirement benefits, what will you do about it? And the last one, can you consider establishing a national employment oversight authority? Those are a few. Some that I've received have already been raised by members in the committee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, 
As I talk about employment, employers and insuring the employees, this is something that I'm going to look at uh, very, very, important, uh, very, very uh, carefully because it goes hand in hand with things and with uh, the question that I did not answer of NSSF. And it is important because you realize that um, if you work for a company and they're not able to provide you enough income to be able to get private insurance and you're not able to get into the government insurance, then there needs to be a way of plugging it in. We have to be very careful that also we don't scare employers away in terms of uh, the cost of doing business in our country. So it's a balancing act, so I'll be able to, to look at that. NSSF uh, has a portfolio of about 400 billion, and we want to grow that to a billion by being creative in where we invest, even outside the country. We have seen other countries come and invest in our country. They have pension funds, so we can grow money for the pensioners. And also be able to turn around the three months that are now the 13 days to 24 hours, so that when you exit, you can get your pension. But unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, if you're not a member of parliament in this country or a senior government official, when you leave, you get nothing. You get very little. So we want to push it such as now, at least we have a system whereby you can be getting 60% of the pension you are getting, not the 3 or 5 or 10% that you are getting, so that your life continues. Si unatoka kazini, alafu unachaka, unaanza kuparara, because your life has just taken a dive, so that you're able to save. But to get that, we need to get a saving culture. Uh, only 3.3 million uh, people in this country uh, have a pension scheme. We have to get that, and there are uh, different initiatives that are there to get the, uh, the other sectors into saving, and I'm going to run a campaign of encouraging people to save, being asked, well, may, how much have you saved? It doesn't matter. It can be 20 shillings or 50 shillings or 100 shillings. We need a saving culture because Ujano Kama Moshi Ukienda Urudi, one day we all grow old. And so if you grow old and you don't have a kitty you've been saving and you've been eating everything, then you'll end up in the street. And the culture nowadays is not like the other one. You know, the Gen Zs are growing up and moving on in their lives. They'll not be there to take care of us when you grow old. So I'm going to get into a communication program for Kenyans to know when you eat something, if you have three mangoes, please put one aside and eat two uh, for, for another day to get that culture. Uh, I've heard about the staff of UHC. I'm, a, I'm aware because we piloted that also in Machakos. I'll also be looking into that. The older persons, one of the things that I like to do is look at how we can give benefits to older people. In many countries, you find their benefits. For example, in the United States, where they, after you pass a certain age, you get a card. That card allows you to even uh, get into uh, some public transportation for free. Uh, that even allow you at that particular age to get a discount so that when you go shopping at a shopping mall or you go shopping at a center or somewhere or you go buy something or if you're seeking a government service, you show your card and you get a 10, 20% discount because you're at an age where you're not earning an income. You're actually using your pension. So I'd like to introduce that so that our old people have a, a card that you can use to get a discount. Uh, that will cushion you in terms of, uh, in terms of social uh, protection. I've heard about the flower uh, issues in Naivasha. And the also bulk of these old people nominee are in the rural areas. In the rural areas. Where yes. will, get the, will they get discounts in villages in Trukana? Uh, well, it's also when they seek uh, government You'll services. You'll pilot probably yes. from senders, mm. but also pay attention to the rural, rural areas. areas. Yes. We'll find ways. And but the main, I think the main thrust here is the intention. And yes. the intention is that our older generation need to have a way of cushioning them. They served us. They are our parents. They have taken good care of us. <laughs> Let's cushion them in the old age and create a system in our country that takes care of them, uh, even as they go about with the Inua Jami, uh, that is good, but also whether we can even go further and see how we can we work in with other organizations, see what we can do. There was a question about uh, the child welfare and uh, children's society and their fundraising. Uh, we will be bringing, uh, be bringing, if I get confirmed and appointed, uh, cabinet papers to see whether we can create special funds so we can have internally regenerated funds for able to use for children welfare. And also fast track some of the laws. For example, uh, Kenya is, uh, has been identified as a country that is heavily involved in child trafficking. Uh, we are a conduit of child traffickers. We are a destination of child traffickers. We are a source of child trafficking. Uh, and it is also because we have failed, and I'll be bringing through cabinet, I think it's already there, through the, uh, if I'm appointed through the uh, 
uh, Shungwa, the passage of us to be to get into the Hague Convention for the protection of child, you know, uh, trafficking. Because if countries like Somali can sign child trafficking in the Hague and Tanzania and Uganda and others, and we have failed to do so, it makes us look like we really support trafficking of children across uh, the world. Uh, on the minimum wage, I will look into it. I'll sit down and see because it depends on what the market can afford. But also we need to, I remember as I finalize, Ford, when uh, Henry Ford, when he built the Ford company, he said he would pay his employees enough money that they can afford to buy the cars that they build. We need to be a culture where we can pay people enough money to enable them to be able to live decent lives according to what the market can also afford. So it's a discussion with the employers because we don't also want to uh, destroy the good uh, enabling environment for work, but it is important. On uh, contractual benefits and job uh, referral, I've taken note, and it's something that I will look at. I submit. Thank you, Nomini. The last two issues I want to put to you. On the issue, as a follow-up to Mishi, Honorable Mishi's issue about Saudi Arabia, yes. what you probably will need to do is check out on a country like Philippines. It is the largest exporter of non-professional workers in the world. Anywhere you go in big hotels, you'll find Filipino workers, happy, decent, find out what mechanisms and legal regime they operate between Philippines and the countries they work. Anywhere you go, perhaps if, if you go to the moon, you'll find a Filipino worker. The last one, you've talked about NSSF. You can borrow a leave from our neighbor, Tanzania. What Tanzanians do all the big money held by NSSF, they have engaged with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and instead of government buying property as missions, it's NSSF that buys those properties and owns them. So the government then pays NSSF rent at source. You reduce yourself from the problems of foreign exchange, and instead of paying foreign exchange to another country, you are paying in local currency at the rates of those countries to your own NSSF. So even the rate of return on the investment is excellent. You may consider engaging NSSF to do that. I'll end there. And uh, after we finish, you will see our secretariat. They have some uh, mismatch with your documents uh, so that you can put them in order for the record. Uh, I want to ask you a few last questions. Do you have any, have you ever been mentioned adversely in any integrity related report or investigations? Forget no, about your Machakos shenanigans? No, I have never. Yes. Do you hold any leadership position in any political party within Kenya? No, I do not. What is your net worth? Net worth is 462 million shillings. Made of? Made of, of uh, assets that I have, like homes, uh, land, uh, where I do some bit of farming, and uh, a few businesses that I have. Thank you. Thank you, Alfred. Uh, make sure before you leave, you sort out your documentation with the Secretariat. So we can release you to go back to your other uh, duties. And uh, thank yes, you. Yes, pardon? As, say? Yes. Oh, how, sorry, sorry, yes. You appeared before us in 2022. How much were you worth then? I think that's a serious omission. I, I was worth 420 uh, million shillings. And today? And, uh, 462. Yes. It's been about 9 to 10% no more uh, growth in terms of land value and uh, growth in the, in the industries. Thank you. You may be escorted by our sergeant. Have a good day and a blessed Sunday.
Uh, pardon? We, honorable members, you'll have a 10 minute break to allow the clerks to put the documentation for the next nominee. Thank <laughs> you.